In this video, we will review configuring service level management functionality in Footprint. The first thing we need to discuss are the different types of records that exist in the service portfolio container within Footprint. We have four types. First is the type service. So this really has no direct correlation with the service level management functionality, but obviously you're looking to track service levels against your services that you're implementing. So you do have the ability to have a record within the service portfolio that's going to have all of your service details about the services you're providing. These can be configured to be available in your service catalog. Um, it's really up to you. But there is no direct functionality integration with the service level management capabilities themselves. The contract is another type of record in the service portfolio. It's really just the place where you put your agreement with the customer. Um, so this could be any type of a, a contract or agreement, service level agreement, operational level agreement, etc. Um, it really just has all the details of the agreement itself, kind of like a, a just a document, a Word document or PDF of the agreement. And once again, this is not any functionality that's actionable with the service level management functionality in Footprint. Service level target is where we get to the first thing that is actually actionable. So this is where you actually track your targets for your different uh, agreements that you have, your different contracts. Um, specifically, the functionality that we, Footprints can track is response and resolution targets. So we will resolve things within four hours or we'll respond within two hours or two days, etc. The work target is the last type of record in the service portfolio. And this is going to be a record that you're not going to create, only the system itself will create it. So what's going to happen is when someone creates a new incident or ticket within the system, if everything's configured correctly, it's going to automatically look for appropriate service level targets that apply to this particular type of incident. Once it finds a match, it's going to then automatically create a work target for this particular incident and calculate those response and resolution times. So there's a little diagram here, a little flow of how it's going to work and what the system's going to be doing, because uh, once the configuration is done, a lot of this matching is done behind the scenes. So first, you're going to create a new ticket in the system. Let's say that ticket has fields priority and location. And an example, when someone's creating this new ticket, they fill out the priority to be high and the location to be Tampa. There's going to be a rule associated with that ticket, and it's automatically going to look for a matching service level target. In the service portfolio, let's say we already have three service level targets. And within them, they also have fields called priority and location. And you can see for each one of the service level targets, they have uh, specific values for priority and location. When this new ticket is created, this rule, what it's going to do is look for all, look through all the service level targets, match them up field by field. All the fields that have the exact same name, it's going to look to see if it has the exact same value as what's in the ticket. And in this case, it's going to find a match with the third one and only the third one. It could have possibly found multiple matches if that's how it was configured, which would be no problem at all if you're looking to track multiple types of targets against a particular ticket you're going to be allowed to do that once it finds the match the rule is automatically going to then create a new work target and as part of creating that work target it's going to calculate a response and resolution time so if your service level target said we should respond within three hours for example and someone submits the ticket at 2 p.m. the work target is going to get created and have a value of 6 p.m. Uh, in one of the date fields it's tracking the target date then that work target is going to be linked back to the ticket. So there's a one-for-one -one relationship between work targets and tickets. Now let's take a look in the application itself. First, we're going to run through what you need to configure, assuming you've used the ITSM business process template initially to create your various containers, including your workspace for your service desk as well as your service portfolio. There are a few additional steps that are needed to get the configuration to work for service level management based on your specific needs. Uh, but for the most part, most of the configuration is already part of that template. It's the recommended way that you would want to go about configuring this to save yourself a lot of time. After that, we're going to show you how to actually build everything from scratch and all the steps that you need to enable tracking uh, service level management. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure you have your service level targets. Within the go into the service portfolio container, you need service level targets because, like I said, that was kind of the first thing that's actionable in the system. Uh, when a new incident or ticket is created, it's going to look for those service level targets and try to find a match. I do have a couple here that are actually used for a different purpose. Uh, I don't have any in my service portfolio container that I initially created. So let's go create a couple. So 
So you want to give your target name various fields here, um, but we want to point out a few fields in particular. So I went ahead and gave the service level target a name. For priority, I chose uh, the critical choice. Um, so this field priority is also going to exist in our incident record. It's going to be named exactly priority and has the same exact choices in the drop down list. So it's very important. We have to make sure when we want to find a match that the field name and the choices, if it's a drop down field, have to be exactly the same so it could find a match. The different types of targets we have. So since I call this response time, I'll choose response time. Uh, some various other information here. Let's just say we'll keep the default that we want the target to be four hours and we can base it on some type of work schedule. If we have normal work week here, it can be based on any type of work schedule that you want. This is the main information you need to fill out. So let's give this a save. So I've skipped ahead here and went about creating two different service level targets. One for critical response time, one for high response time. And you can see we have different values, four hours and eight hours, based on the uh, either the high or the critical priority. Next, you're going to want to go into administration and make sure you have the proper information about the work targets that are going to be created showing up in your form. So on the incident form, there's going to be information about the work targets. It's going to say exactly when the response date, time, and date, or uh, resolution time and date is going to be. You can see here at the bottom of the link section, we have this work target section. And if I go into it, you can see it already has configuration for the record number and the status of the work target. But we're also going to want to know the dates and times, so let's add those. So we have some options over here on the left hand side for target type and target date, so we'll add those as columns. Now I just want to save the changes I made to my form and then also publish my workspace so those changes are going to take effect. The final thing you need to do before you publish is to set up a rule that's going to automatically do that whole process I showed before during the presentation. So if we go under business rules, we create a new general rule in my case. I'll call it SLM rule. Trigger, we want it to happen after someone saves anytime they create or update. You want to make sure it happens on update because this rule is also going to not only set the initial dates and times, but also reconfigure the dates and times each time. I don't want any criteria because I want it to happen all the time. And the action I want to use is to act activate service response and resolution enforcement. So this one action kind of does all the things that we saw in that presentation before. It's going to f look for existing service level targets, find a match, create a new work target, and then link that work target and uh, find, figure out those dates of when things are due, etc. Once you save your rule, make sure you go and publish your workspace for all the changes to take effect. Let's go create a new incident now. So I switch here to the home tab. I can do new. Service Desk Incident. I fill out a short description. description, And now I'm going to want to make sure that the priority matches one of my priorities. You can see the priority field is the same exact name and the values are the same exact values. So in this example we're only using priority as the only fields that are in common so that's the only thing that's going to uh, match. I can now save my ticket. And you can see incident 79 was created. I could jump down to the bottom of the link section. And you can see we have a new work target that's currently pending. It's response time and it's calculated four hours from now. In my case, it happens to be going to the next day because we're using a work calendar. So the next day starts at 8 a.m. Four hours from 8 a.m. is 12 p.m. Okay, so that's all you needed to do for configuration if you were using the ITSM business process template. A lot of the configuration was already done for you. Now let's take a look at what we need to do for starting completely from scratch. So for example, I wanted to create a brand new workspace and a brand new service portfolio uh, with nothing configured and I want to uh, configure all that information from scratch for my service level purposes. First I'd go back to the main administration page and we have to create at least two new containers. We have to create a new workspace, so under here I can just click on create and we need to create a new service portfolio and you also need to click on create. So I'll create those and then we'll go into configuring them. Okay, so I went through the process of creating those two containers. So you can see now I have demo service portfolio and demo workspace. Let's go into the workspace. You can see you just created one type of record called a ticket. If I go in there and configure it, let's add a new field to the form. 
So you can see the basic out of the box, we just have short description, status, priority, assignees, description, not really much more information here. So let's add something simple. Um, maybe we'll just add a field called service level. So I want to make this a drop down. So I'll add my drop down form control on here. Maybe I'll put it right below status. And I have to bind this to a field, which I don't have an existing one yet. So I'll choose to create a new field. So I filled out my information. I called it service level. I added choices gold, silver, and bronze. So let's save this. And then we can go back to the form. And you can see I have my service level field there. So let's save the form and move forward. Now since this is the field that we're going to want to match on, let's make sure we have the same exact field in our new demo service portfolio container. So you can see I created it from scratch. It created these uh, four different types of records, which I had mentioned earlier in the presentation. Uh, but what we're most interested in is the service level target. So let's go to that form and add the same field called service level. I also want to make sure it's the same type, so I'll choose drop down. I'll put it in here. Uh, maybe I'll just put it at the bottom. Once again, there's no field in this container for that yet, so I'll create a new one. And you can see I have the field service level. I have my same choice as gold, silver, bronze. And I could save it, and then we can go back to the form and see it's still on the form. And then let's save our form. The next thing we're going to want to do is configure relationships in each one of the containers. So if I go back to my service portfolio container, there's an option over here for relationships, which I currently have none. I want to go add a new one, and I want to select the type work target service level target here at the bottom. As with any relationships, you have to select uh, what role each side is going to play and what role, uh, et cetera. So I could choose for the work target from my container, this container, demo service portfolio. I want to choose the thing that's also called work target. And then playing the role of the service level target, I have a few different containers here, so I want to make sure to pick the right one. The one that I just created, demo service portfolio, I want to choose the service level target in there and save. Next, I want to do something similar in the workspace. So going back to my workspace tab, I also have a relationships option here. And there's nothing in there because I created this from scratch. But I want to add a new relationship, and I want to make sure I have the ticket work target configured. So once again, I'm going to choose what I have in here. It happens to be called ticket. If it was called incident, you would choose incident. And once again, we're starting from scratch. This is very simple, so there's not much to configure in here. Make sure once again, you choose the appropriate service portfolio container. So I have a few. Demo service portfolio is the one I created. And I have the work target in there. And I want to save that. Now I want to go back into my ticket definition here. And once again, go back to the agent web form. You could have done some of these steps in a different order so you weren't bouncing around so much. But the way I like to explain it is to make sure we have everything matching up first and then uh, kind of do all the clean. So in order to be able to see the work targets, we're going to need a new link control that's going to show us a list of all the work targets that are going to be associated with this ticket. So we create a new link control. I could re-enable, relabel it work targets. And then I'm going to want to choose the relationship that I just configured. So this list is going to be very small because as you saw, I only created that one relationship for the ticket work target. And then I want to choose what columns are going to appear in this work targets grid here. So once again, it probably makes sense. We want to see uh, the status, most importantly, the date, etc. So I'll have status, target date, and then maybe also target type. So we can tell if it's a response or a resolution. So I'll save my form. And then I'll move on. The next step we have to take care of in the workspace is actually creating that rule, which we showed before, that's going to do all the matching and automatically creating the work target and linking it back, etc. So under business rules, something I didn't show before, we have a specialized service level management rule. So it's just going to eliminate some of the options for you to make it more targeted. You can see I just called it SLM rule there. For triggers, once again, we want this to happen on create and on update after save. It's really it's kind of pre-configured for you. No criteria because we always want it to happen. And then the action is already selected for us. Activate service response and resolution enforcement. And then I could save the rule. 
So we made some changes to multiple containers, so we want to make sure we publish both of these. Okay, so the workspace is published. Now let's go to the service portfolio. I'll do the same and publish that. So now the service portfolio is also published. Everything should be available for us. If I go back into my service portfolio console here, I should see a new option. So now demo service portfolio have this new type of service level target in this new container. So let's create a few. So you can see I skipped ahead and I created two different service level targets in my demo service portfolio container. One called gold resolution time, silver resolution time. You can see they have either one hour or two hours. They have the service level filled out to either gold or silver and they're based on resolution time. Now let's go create a new ticket in our demo workspace and see this all working. So I'm going to quickly fill out a few fields. So I quickly filled out my short description, my description. I set the service level to be gold and we'll save. And you can see right when it saves, it takes me into edit mode for ticket one and I have my linked work target that's pending and it's based on one hour from 8 a.m. which is going to be 9 a.m. So those are the basics for getting started with configuring service level management. You can see there were a lot less steps if you used the ITSM business process template to get you started, but now you should have the tools to be able to configure any type of uh, target that you want for service level agreements, operational level agreements, etc. It's going to find a match and going to give you the ability to have multiple work targets all at the same time based on different criteria and different fields. Um, all the examples I gave were just based on one field, but it could be a combination of priority, service level, category, any fields. You just have to make sure they're in common and on both the service level target record and the ticket or incident record. All right. Thank you and have a good day.